Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin to the come video. We're going to be talking about graphics cards. Yes, more information has emerged on both the GTX 1060, which makes it look even tastier, and also the 490 is most likely, from AMD's own words, not going to be using the Polaris 10 chip because we have already seen its maximum retail configuration. We'll get into both of those in just a moment. Uh, via FYI, the CPU review I've been working on is basically done that is going to be up tomorrow which should be the 5th of July and then I'm going to be starting work on our own RX 480 reviews then we'll be going to be uh, moving on to a keyboard and a headset review then I'm going to be looking at the GTX 1060 and then we've got some other bits and pieces like interviews and SSD stuff coming up. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, you know what to do. Click the subscribe button and share it with your friends. But anyway, um, back on track. So you might have heard of the RX 480. You Probably a bloody good chance you have, right? Now, the RX 480, its full configuration is 2304 shaders. So there was some questions early on in the leaks of Polaris 10 that said that the full unit was 40 compute units. This would mean it's got 2560 streaming processors. For those of you who are not sure what that means, it basically means that for the 480, four compute units were disabled. So essentially they weren't giving you the full unit. It was disabled for yields or just for you know segmentation of their uh, products. So that means we're in a very interesting situation because the 480 is the maximum configuration of Polaris 10. Therefore, the 480X, assuming it's a thing, or the 490 cannot make use of a higher-end Polaris 10. Now, you might say to yourself, how do we know this? Well, the information has actually come from AMD themselves. Uh, PC Games Hardware were having an interview with the senior product manager for Polaris 10. His name is uh, Evan Gr Granoki. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Probably not, if I'm totally honest. And he has said that I can absolutely confirm to you right here that Polaris 10 is in full retail configuration defined by the silicon is 36 compute unit configuration nothing else hidden on the product that end users might look forward to unlocking. This is the pinnacle, the latest, the greatest of the Polaris 10 products, end quote. Now, there are a couple of things to note here, and this is going back from my own conversations with AMD, uh, based upon interviews and casual conversations. This is also based upon a lot of leaks and a lot of information. AMD are working on other products. We know that, it's in roadmaps, that's well established, but Vega 10, supposedly is going to be the ultra super duper high-end GPU that's going to have probably 64 CUs based upon um, that pretty infamous uh, LinkedIn leak slash you know posting which means we're in a very curious situation because 36 to 64 that's almost double the number that's an awful lot so I don't think they're gonna just go from like 480 to 490 by simply doubling it which means that we're gonna have a very interesting set of possibilities it could be the Polaris 9 is actually a thing and they've just not announced it there could be GPUs or cores which are not announced by AMD that they've just not shown on roadmaps. Now, I'm not saying there is because they've not talked about it and this is me speculating. Or it's possible that the 490 could be, well, let's say, a dual GPU part. You know, two parts on one thing, maybe. It could be the 380, uh, sorry, the 480X is going to have higher clock speeds, although... I don't know, but I'm a bit I'm a bit dubious about that. It's possible, I guess, but I'm very dubious. So what I'm saying is I'm very curious to know what they're working on in the background. But enough about the Polaris. Let's talk about the 1060. So the first thing that we can discuss, and these are based upon previous leaks, the card will have 
1280 CUDA cores have a boost clock of 1.7 GHz, memory configuration of up to 6 GB. That's important because there is a lower end configuration which is 3 GB, we'll get to that. Memory speed of 8 GB per second and one PC um, one six pin power connector with a TDP of 120 watts. And there is a whole bunch of display connectors. I have to say it's pretty impressive for a, I wouldn't say budget card, but a mainstream card. 3DP 1.4s, HDMI, and a dual link DVI. So basically everything you could possibly want in a card's uh, connectivity. Now, the interesting thing about all of this is it's possible that we won't be seeing SLI connectors on either the 3 gigabyte and the 6 gigabyte versions of the card, whereas other reports are saying that it's disabled purely on the 3 gigabyte. Some le recent leaks have appeared on the internet from Pure PC, and they show that yes, the SLI finger, which of course you'd normally associate with, well, uh, well, SLI, is certainly missing. It is not there. And this would probably indicate some interesting decisions for users if it is in fact disabled on the 6 gigabyte and the 3 gigabyte. The 3 gigabyte I can somewhat understand because, well, let's face it, memory limitations of running two cards in SLI, probably not worth it for most folks anyway, if you're going to high resolutions. But disabling it on six gigabyte is gonna make things very interesting because it means essentially if you're, let's say, buying the card August and you decide, you know what, I wanna buy a larger screen, I decide to go SLI, wait, I can't do that. So basically, if you need more pixel pushing power, let's say three months down the line, you're basically stuck. With that said, the performance of these GPUs is around the 980. So you should be theoretically okay for like 1440p for say the next year anyway. So it really is swings and roundabouts. Now what is quite nice about these cards is that the actual PCB, that would be the circuitry, is actually rather small. Um, whether this is going to mean anything when it comes to overclocking, that type of jazz, it's unknown. But in the images, you can clearly see that a lot of the cooler is, well, basically blank. And in fact, even the 6-pin power connector is basically plugging into the cooler, and then we assume, obviously, there's some wires which are routing it around to the actual board. It's quite an interesting little design. Personally, I'm quite looking forward to the GTX 1060. Um, if it's roughly 15-ish percent higher in performance than the 106, than the I'm sorry, than the 480, considering it's got a price increase as well, I don't necessarily know if it's a better buy, but it's an alternative. Honestly, I don't necessarily think that sometimes you need a better purchase because better is very subjective. It's based upon your usages. For example, yes, technically, if I was to say to you the GTX 1080 is a better card than, let's say, the GTX 1070. Yes, that's true. It certainly is a better card. It has higher levels of performance. But if you're only running, let's say, a 1080p screen, it's better, but it's not better for you. So at the end of the day, it comes down to usage scenarios and what you can personally afford. Because let's say if you've only got 200 US dollars, then the 1080 can give you, you know, make you breakfast in the morning and sing you lullabies as you're going to sleep at night. It's not gonna make a difference. You simply cannot afford that amount of money. So I'm happy, I'm happy with good options in the market. I think it's good for us as customers. And it also means that there's gonna be a lot of price fighting, which is also brilliant for us as customers. With all of that said, uh, I'm gonna get going because I have an awful lot of stuff to edit and do over the next couple of days. I apologize for not putting out as much video content myself over the past, well, let's say 48 to 72 hours. I've just been really busy with all the review stuff. Um, I've done all of the filming for the CPU and the video card, which is, of course, the 480. So we've got all of the product shots and all of that stuff done. So now I have to do the benchmarking for the 480. So I'm kind of behind simply because we've been changing around how we're putting benchmarks and presenting stuff. So I would put it this way. I would rather be a little slower but get things 
better for you all than faster and, you know, not improve our quality. So, hopefully, we've made the right decision. Anyway, I'll see you all soon. Take care. Bye.